Welcome back to the show. You're watching NHL Now. Big night in the national. Tons of games, including this one. The Dallas Stars playing host to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Crosby and company playing on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. Huge implications for this one for the Pens in the wildcard race. Dallas also fighting for top spot in their division. This one goes 9 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. You'll hear Ray Ferraro on the call for that one. He joins us now to get you set for the game. Uh, Ray, huge two points for Pittsburgh last mm. night. Sidney Crosby had the filthy backhand yeah. shelf goal. Uh, but what was your main takeaway from the way Pittsburgh performed last night? Well, I, I thought they were outstanding to start with, but I, I think probably some relief for them. Um, the, you know, they lost to Ottawa a couple of days before. They had uh, 48 or 49 shots on goal. Um, you know, couldn't beat Dylan Ferguson, who had his his first NHL win. So they had, you know, they had played quite well. Then they went in last Saturday and got thumped in uh, in New York. And it's like all of a sudden they're exposed all over the place. Their defense is an absolute health mess. They, you know, they lost Jan Ruta. Um, Jeff Petrie skated this morning. I, I don't know what his status is. Um, they don't have uh, Kulikov. Um, they lost Marcus Pedersen, so they're down four of their top six guys, and you're hanging on by a thread. Now they just, I just, uh, we just found out they called up uh, a goaltender, Dustin Tokarski, and uh, Philip Hallander, a forward. They're on uh, emergency recall, so they've got a couple other health issues tonight. So it last night's win was an outstanding game. They got goals from the bottom part of their lineup in Jeff Carter, which they haven't gotten in forever. And they put two points in the bank because tonight becomes like an enormous mountain. It already was flying from Denver to Dallas. Uh, you lose the time, the hour you come back, uh, back to back nights. Uh, I don't, I don't really know what an older team is going to have in the tank. Uh, and then you add the health concerns on top of it. This is going to be tough for Pittsburgh tonight. Ray, you know, we showed uh, we showed that backhander from Sidney Crosby. We've talked about yeah. it a number of times. Let me ask a, uh, a left-shot centerman who scored over 400 goals in the National Hockey League in his career. What do you make of that backhand of Sidney Crosby's? I don't know how he does it. I don't. The only other guy I can think of like that. Um, Hartsy, probably too old for you. I don't know that you played against Mike Madonna, but no, yep. you probably yeah, did. I did yep. You played against Madonna, right? Modo, um, yep. Could he ever shoot that backhand like that? It looked like this. From distance, it was a rocket. And I don't know how Sid is able to generate that power with it. Madonna would do it too on the fly. And um, it's just something unique that those guys can do. That So now I've got a list of two. And maybe the other one would be Paul Correa, would be three. But, I, like, who can do that? Like, that's what Sid is doing this year, I think, um, probably gets washed away in the, you know, the brilliance of, of Connor McDavid and uh, that amazing year that he's having. But at age 35, he's got his third 30-goal year in his 30s. He's in the top 15 at scoring. He's a consistency machine, and uh, and I think we probably take him for granted. Yes, Ray. Oh, you're getting me so hyped up right now because I believe you said this. the same thing yesterday. I said it yesterday before the yeah. filthy goal, and everyone went, oh, wow, Sidney Crosby is still amazing. I was like, we do not appreciate this man enough. Anyway, Scott, it's your turn yeah. to ask a question. <laughs> question for you. Which is it a bigger game for? Is it bigger for the Pittsburgh Penguins to get in the playoffs, or is it bigger for uh, Dallas to not play Minnesota or Colorado yeah. in that first round. <laughs> well, I, I mean, would you? How would you want to play those two teams, right? I mean, like mm -hmm. Minnesota would be that. That would be a hard physical series to to play them. Like just the the way they play, the way there's just something about that team. I I think they've done an amazing job with the squeeze on their salary cap. Um, the injury to Capri's off of late, and they're still there. For Colorado to do what they've done with the litany of injuries they've had all year, I don't want to play them either. So if I'm <laughs> Dallas, yeah, this is super important, but that has to take second place to it. You're either you're in or you're out. And Pittsburgh's getting to that point now. I think they got 11 games left, and there's just there's no room. I mean, they they don't have a lot of runway left and you know they're not going to have Pedersen for you know he's on long-term injury that's 10 games um you know they hope to get Petrie back could he be back tonight that would really be helpful they don't have Kulikov he's not even skating I 
Pittsburgh's going to be tough to get in. It's going to be tough for them to get in. I think they're going to get in, but it's going to be tough for them. So I, I'm going to say Florida. I'm going to say, or rather, Pittsburgh. This is a more important game for Pittsburgh than than Dallas tonight. Like, look at that mess. I, at one point, you're like, you're like the Islanders. They've played. They don't have enough games left, and then they have played really well and put themselves in a in a pretty pretty good position because of the way that they're playing. And they're doing this without Matt Barzell as well, which is which is super impressive. Ray, I want to ask you about something with the Dallas Stars as well as you are doing that game tonight. Wyatt Johnson is someone that's been quietly, uh, you know, he's a rookie, he's a young player. He had an unbelievable kind of uh, run in junior hockey. Uh, how impressed have you been with Wyatt Johnson's first year in the National Hockey League? I, I think it's a remarkably undertold story. Um, you know, uh, we talked to Wyatt after practice today. He comes out, he's wearing his jeans and a T-shirt. He looks like he's 16. Like, you, you can't even believe how, like, how young and thin he is. He's just like, he's not a big guy. He's so smart. Like, he, you know, uh, we talked to Pete DeBoer about him, too. And DeBoer talked about his, his on-ice uh, awareness, his spatial awareness, where to be, when to go. He also talked about playing with, Jay, with Jamie Benn and how Ben takes away a little bit of the flies that might bother a younger player. And guys are like, yeah, I don't really want to bug him because I got Ben breathing down my back. And so the two of them have played so well together. It's really crazy when you think of this. A couple of things. So he's living with Joe Pavelski and his family. Uh, Joe's got a 12-year-old son. Johnson's 19. So Johnson has more in common with Pavelski's son than he does with Pavelski. I mean, they play the same video games and they're, yeah. he says, oh yeah, we hang out, we play mini sticks and knee hockey. And I'm like, this guy's got 21 goals in the NHL. <laughs> he was also born, he was also born three months after Ryan Suter got drafted. Yeah. Like the, the youth wow. of, of, of him, what he's doing, the what Dallas has done. Here, here's another part of this story is that his draft year, he played seven games. There was no OHL that year because yeah. of COVID. He played seven games in the U18 tournament, and Jim Nill and his, and his staff, Joe McDonnell, they said, you know what? We still like this guy as a first-round pick. They watched him play seven times in his draft year. He had 120 points last year in junior, and now he's got 21 goals. That, that kid is a – you put him along with that 2017 draft class here in Dallas of, of Jake Ottinger, Miro Haskin, and Jason Robertson – and the future looks really, really bright here in Dallas. You talk about uh, Pavelski, you taking in the young kid. Uh, how about the captain, the leader on and off the ice there, Jamie Benn? How, how has his, this year been for him uh, after a few kind of off years for Jamie Benn, just being that leader uh, in well, the Dallas Stars locker room? Well, Hertzie, you know, you, as you get older, like you can't do what you used to do, and you know it, and the team knows it, and your coach knows it, but you're thinking in your head, how can I – still be an effective player like what do i have to change what can't i do what can i still do um and jamie ben had to he had to take a talk with pete DeBoer to to heart and so pete said look i'm gonna i'm gonna play on the third line with these two young guys uh, ty delandria and this wyatt johnson who of course you know nobody really had any plans for for johnson at the uh, johnson at the start of the year and then he said and i'm gonna cut your minutes back because i want you to play faster so he he got dropped from, you know, a top six role into a kind of a mid six role. His minutes went down three minutes a game, but they play him on the power play. And all of a sudden, Ben, because of the less minutes, perhaps, maybe because he changed his training, he's a little quicker. He's a little sharper on the puck. He's had an amazing year. I, 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 I think he's got 30 goals, so at 70 points this year. And the last time he did that was, you know, was four years ago. That, 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 return to performance doesn't happen at this age very easily so he he deserves a lot of credit because he's uh he's a big part of of the resurgence of the dallas stars what are they calling it the benison benison yep. i don't know who started that but it's very like good it's very good i'm gonna say i'm gonna you mind if i use that today is that whose is that it's Who's not mine I, I also oh, stole you. it yeah. so I, I take no credit for yeah. benison's whatsoever <laughs> uh but uh i got one more for you miro haskin an 11 game point streak right now Ej, i know you you like Always his loved, game when yeah. he's on what, what does he bring to this dallas stars lineup what makes him so good <clears throat> Well, the way he skates is, um, is is one of the best 
benefits that you could have as a player. He makes it look so easy all the time. Like, like he's, um, it's, uh, I call them easy skaters. They, it never looks like it's work. It never looks like they have to grind or dig in. He just covers so much ice so easily. And uh, again, today, when we were talking to the stars, they said, you know, the one thing they're trying to do is limit his penalty killing minutes. Uh, last game, they played Seattle. They get into overtime. He played 30 minutes. And it's it's just too much. And one, one of the things that's happened with Dallas is they've gotten a lot of mileage out of some defensemen that should probably be third pair guys. And one of the reasons they can do that is Essa Lindell is a, is a tremendous defender. And so he kind of anchors that second pair, but they can, they can put Haskin in with almost anybody and he can make up for any deficiencies that partner has. They don't, they're not deep on the blue line. Haskin is an underrated, um, uh, underappreciated star. He's not. Ju- he's a true, legit number one defense. Yeah. All right. Well, it's an 11 game point streak uh, for Miro Haskin, and now that tie is a franchise record for a defenseman. We'll see if he can make it 12 uh, tonight against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, the game's on ESPN, nine o'clock Eastern time. Puck drop. Ray, thank you for the time. I will be having a sip of my wine every time you say Benessance tonight. So uh, I look forward <laughs> oh, to watching. Well, well, only once. I can only use it once. I, I can't do it more than once. That's just not me. But once is it. Tell Lee, Tell Steve Levy to say it four or five times. Oh, it makes Levy it will. We'll do it. Get you Jeffy hammered. <laughs> Listen, if there was a night to do this game, was worth it. Uh, yeah. Ray, have a great call tonight. Have a great night, everyone. See yeah. you.